I think it's about time I sit down and share my full testimony. I've made a video like this before a year and a half ago, but it was a condensed version while I started stepping into sharing my faith on social media when I was 28 years old. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my full and complete testimony of kind of where I started, how I built my relationship with Jesus and the ups and downs, the challenges, the character development along the journey and really how I got to where I am today being in full-time ministry as an online Christian content creator. So if you wanna check that out, we're gonna dive into that today. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see more videos around faith, hope and encouragement, prayers and anything that God really puts on my heart and, and I feel led to share. So let's go back, if you will. We're going to talk about when I was growing up. When I, I grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona. My name is Dane Camilla. I'm 31 years old right now. And I grew up in the church, meaning I went to church. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus, but I went to church every single Sunday because I was raised by a mom and a dad, a mom who had strong faith and was a very strong believer, and a dad who was, who was a believer, but didn't have necessarily strong faith. Again, relationship dynamics are different for parents and that's the one uh, that I kind of grew up with. My parents were amazing. They loved each and every one of us. I have three other siblings, two brothers, Ross, the older one, Sean, the younger one, and I also have an older sister named Danielle who's the oldest. And we grew up going to church on Sundays and that was a consistent thing that we did. And for me at that time, from as early as I can remember to all the way up until when I was 18 years old, I just went because my mom asked us to. We would go to church, I'd sit through the motions, talk with my siblings and things like that, and then after church, every single time after church, we would go and get some food or something like that, you know, from a Sam's Club or anything else that was kind of around, and that was always a treat for us. And my mom, in regards to her parenting style when it came to her faith and what she believed and training us up in that was done in, I would say, a very effective way. Although I didn't have a strong relationship with Jesus at the time, she never pushed her faith or beliefs on us. We would pray and pray over dinner and pray um, at night, especially with my grandma, who was amazing and strong in her faith as well, too. But my mom really only expected us as kids to attend church with her. That was her big one requirement, which was fine. And we did that. And we were able to connect and hang out as a family there and then go and get some food, like I said before. So that was my relationship with Jesus all the way up until I was 18. And I really said, I, when I said that before, I really didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I was a believer, but I wasn't a follower. And I think there's a difference between the two. And I'll share with you how I started becoming a follower and started practicing my faith. And one other thing I wanna mention is, as I was growing up in elementary school, as long as I can remember as I was a child, is I was a very worried and like fearful kid. I just always was worried about things and I never understood why. I was shy, quiet, introverted, if you will, and you maybe have seen some of the videos today. I'm very outgoing and I've kind of stepped into my like nature, my true nature, because I think uh, God reveals that to you as you rededicate your life and start living for the word and start filling and feeding your spirit. But that wasn't the case when I was young. And I think the enemy had that as a limitation on my life because I, did, I wasn't equipped to defend against that or understand it or even be aware of it. And although I had a fine childhood, I had friends, I was in sports, grew up in a family that was very athletic. My dad played college sports. My mom played college uh, sports as well, too. That My mom was in track. My dad was a football player and quarterback, and he could play other positions as well, too. So we grew up in an athletic family, and sports was really important. I played soccer from as young as I can remember, and that was my main sport until I moved to playing football in middle school and then eventually in high school. So we were into athletes. I was into competition, and that's kind of how my dad raised us, too, to compete and to, to develop your skills and, and such like that. But I was still a worried and shy kids. So that was always kind of something that was still with me. And then what really changed in where my relationship with Jesus started was when I was 18 years old. And before, before like that happened, there was something that happened to me that was a significant period of time in my life or a significant moment in my life of something that happened that really changed and shaped the direction of what was I going to do as I went into college. I had a horrible GPA in school. I think I graduated high school with a 2.9. I didn't really care about studying and I didn't really care about trying very hard. I cared about sports and some of the things you care about when you're in high school. And I kind of, you know, hung out with everyone because we were a pretty collective community that was open to 
wanting people to come in and not have these like cliques and groups. That's just not kind of how our high school is. Even though we had cliques and groups, everyone kind of hung out with each other as well. And um, during that time, when we were graduating from high school, I didn't even know where I was going to go to college. All my friends kind of had their college picked out and planned out. I had none of that because I didn't even know if I wanted to go to college, to be honest with you, because I was like, I have to spend this money. My parents weren't in a position to help pay for school. I didn't have a scholarship because I wasn't playing sports or I didn't really care about my studies. So I was kind of going into college blind or figuring out what I was going to do, not knowing if I was even going to do it because I wanted to find something that I was passionate about if I was going to go spend the money. So there was a significant event that I was talking about that happened to me that really changed everything. And that was when I was 18 years old. It was summer. And during the summer, at least for a few of the summers while we were in high school, we would go to Mission Beach and hang out. And that's where we kind of spent time. I would go with a group of friends every single year. We would do things that we shouldn't have been doing, like drinking and, and things of that nature. And there was one day on July 4th where I was drinking with friends and drinking too much and not being smart. And I got into a place where I, my friends had left me and I was inebriated to the point where I was on a bicycle and I had crashed on that bicycle. And I, di I don't even remember this happening, but I crashed on the bicycle. And thus, you see there's a scar right here that's kind of visible. There's a scar right here and there's a scar right here. My entire left side of my face was completely like gashed and road rashed and it was just awful. I woke up in the hospital in the morning the next day going, what happened to me? I had all these stitches in my face. My face looked horrible. I went to the mirror and I was, I went to the mirror and I'm like, are my teeth gone? I was so worried about that too. And you know, God, you know, willing, my teeth were fine, but my face was absolutely destroyed. Think about that to your, to your self-confidence as someone who's getting ready to go to college and you don't even know where you're going to go. You don't even know if you're going to get in anywhere. So it was a really difficult time for me. And I, I would say I was pretty depressed at the time as well too, because I was, I was at, I, I came back to my parents' house and I said, what am I going to do with my life? I don't know. You know, I had gained probably 20 pounds after football had ended because you gain weight, but they don't teach you about health or fitness or anything like that. So it was a really, really, really difficult time for me. And I was sitting there and just thinking and, you know, all of these thoughts were going through my head of just like kind of pity and, and shame and guilt of why I did it. And there was a moment that happened where I was just like, you know what, this is the situation. This is where I'm at right now. And I can just wallow in my sorrows or I can do something to move forward and figure out what I want to do with my life. And I had a moment and I don't remember the day that I had it. I was like, you know what, I'm going to change. And the way I'm going to change is I'm going to focus on one area of my life. And at that time, the area of my life was I'm not happy with how my body physically looks. So I'm going to learn everything I can about fitness. I'm going to go to a community college and get a degree in exercise and wellness and whatever fitness, uh, exercise and wellness is the exercise and wellness and health promotion is actually the degree that I graduated with from ASU. So I went to SEC, Scottsdale Community College first for two years because I was, I didn't, you, you can't really declare a major at that time. So I just got the generals out of the way. And I was going to do fitness because I was like, I wanted to change my body. In order for me to change my body, I got to learn about how to change my body. I knew how to work out, but I could learn other things. I could learn about nutrition. And I just became obsessed reading articles, working out, trying things, understanding how my body worked. And it took me on an amazing journey. So there was a hunger that was created from the pain of actually that bike accident event where I was so mad at myself and felt so bad and my face was all messed up and I had these stitches and I just was just in these like this dump and of just complaining and, and, and guilting myself and feeling shameful for you know who I was and the decisions I make. And at this time, I did not have a relationship with Jesus. I was a believer. I believed in Jesus. I had been saved, but I wasn't following. And there's a difference in that. There's a huge difference, right? I wasn't practicing my faith through prayer, through Bible studies and all the other things that we can do, praise and worship, attending a church and actually getting connected and plugged into the church, right? So I decided to make that decision and I started working on my, you know, my physical body, which was great. I was learning a lot of things and there was a point in time when I was 18 years old, getting ready to go to college, where my mom wanted to try a different church. She wanted to try a different church. We had tried a few churches over the 10, 15 years that I was going to church with her and I was still in Arizona. So she asked me to go to church with her and I still did that because I love my mom and dad and they were great and they supported me in regards to just being there for me and just always like we have a very close family. That's uh, one way to put it. So 
she asked me to go to this new church with her. I believe it was just me and her because all of the siblings were in different areas of our life, different schools and things like that. And I think I was maybe the only one who was in Arizona at that time. I could be wrong, but it was just me and my mom that Sunday. And there was a pastor, a new pastor, new sermon, new service. And the pastor who was there, his, his name's Pastor Scott Anderson. You guys can check him out on YouTube. Uh, they're here in Mesa, Arizona. They have a church called Living Word Bible. And he spoke a message that spoke to me as a young adult who didn't know what I wanted to necessarily do with my life or just... He just, he just had a message that spoke to me and the message opened me up. And there are moments of time when God can speak to us through others. I believe that's how the Holy Spirit works in all of us is speaking through others to impart and change our relationship with God. And that's what happened at that service. That day, I was so inspired and just so excited to want to actually start building my relationship with God. And that's when I decided to rededicate my life and commit to actually being a follower. What does it mean to actually read the Bible? I want to understand the word. I want to pray. And I started this pursuit of not only working on my fitness, because that was a passion of mine, going to SCC, getting there and planting and, you know, getting a degree and kind of having a path, having a, uh, an aim in life, right? And I just was starting to work on my relationship with God. I was starting to learn about tithing. I was, I was praying every single day, Heavenly Father, and just talking to Him and learning how to, how to communicate and build my relationship through prayer, through asking God for things, asking God for guidance and wisdom and understanding what I was going through. It was such a, it was an amazing experience. And that started my journey when I was 18 years old. At the same time, when I was attending SCC and building and changing my body, I went from 195 pounds to 160 pounds, got in the best shape of my life. I got a six pack. It was incredible. And the reason I share that with you is because I had a burning desire to change an area of my life, right? That was where I pointed this pain that I had about myself towards. I said, I'm going to change it. No more. Let's go. Let's figure this out. And that was my first career for seven years was in the fitness space, which I'll get to in a moment. But there was a thing that happened while I was attending SCC my freshman year that opened me up to the spiritual gifting that God had on my life. And you know what's really funny? When you start becoming a follower of Jesus, when you start becoming a follower of Jesus and start getting into his, his word, he starts to impart things on your life that open up things about you that you never knew were you but were always there. You just didn't have the opportunity and space to experience them because you were not getting into his presence. I went from a worried, shy kid, didn't know what I wanted to do, never understood why I felt the way I felt. And when I, when I rededicated my life and I started following Jesus, shortly after that, I had a class that was public speaking at SCC and I had to give a public speech on something I was passionate about. And at the time, it had to be fitness because I was working on my fitness, changing my body. And I gave a speech in class. And I'll tell you right now, I never liked giving speeches in school. I was always worried. I was the kid shaking my hand, feeling really uncomfortable because my nature and who I was at the time was a worried, shy kid, right? I embodied that identity, which that was never my true identity, right? But I didn't have a relationship with Jesus at the time, so I didn't know any better or know how to discover it. So I had this class and I gave a speech on what I learned about changing my body and how it's changed my life. And now that I'm, you know, going to school for it. I was also working at a sports performance center as a trainer, an athletic performance trainer for young kids and working with athletes. And it was amazing and building my relationship with God at the same time, reading books to develop my skills so I could skill up and be of more value to the people I was serving every single day. So my life started to take direction. I started to have a little bit more of a purpose. I was understanding what it meant to be actually saved and a believer and follower of Jesus and to be more like him, knowing I'm not perfect. And all these things started to, started to come together. When I gave that speech, this is another extremely important time in my life. I gave that speech. I memorized the whole thing. I spent countless hours practicing it so I could perform it well, right? After I gave that speech, the, the, the class clapped, and I have that speech on YouTube too. If you search my name, you, you'll be able to find that on YouTube. And I gave that speech, and I felt something on my life that said, wow, I really enjoy doing this. How could I do this more? And that was when the seed of God's spiritual planting on my life, because God gives us all spiritual gifts. I believe my spiritual gift today and what it was when I discovered it then, not knowing it was a spiritual gift based on where I was at in my relationship and understanding of the word, was encouragement. I said, I like, to, I like to encourage people and inspire people to want to be better, to hope more in their lives and for the things in their future, right? And again, this is me looking back now, but that is what happened. God revealed something, opened something inside of me that was the spiritual gift that he had placed on my life and he wanted me to build and develop. So coming out of that 
that speech, I was able to start saying like, how do I, how, how do I want to share this? Like, how do I want to encourage people? And just going through that dialogue in my head and prayer and, and talking to God about it. Like, how can I do this, Lord? Yeah, I could get up on a stage, but what could I do where I could practice this every week no matter what? And the answer was, well, I have a phone. There's a thing called YouTube. Why don't I just start making videos sharing my journey? Not sharing my faith like I do today, but sharing my journey. Because I didn't know God had a plan to share my faith years and years later. So I just started pulling up a camera like this, getting in front of it and talking enthusiastically and trying to develop my voice in the gifting and anointing that God had placed on my heart that I didn't know at the time. I just had a desire, right? God gives us desires to, to um, use so we can equip ourselves up in our relationship with him and be of service to others because our purpose here on earth is to serve God, be a follower of Jesus and impact others with the gifting and anointing he's placed on each and every one of our hearts. So I started building it. Little did I know. I didn't know that was a spiritual gift. I didn't know what God was doing, but I just felt it, right? And I'm someone who more so feels God in my life, not so like God is telling me, Dane, this is the spiritual gift on your life. It's encouragement, and this is what you're going to do next. It wasn't like that. I just felt so driven and inspired to want to encourage people. So I just started a YouTube channel. That YouTube channel went on to, you know, not reach a lot of people. Like, you know, we reach a good amount of people on TikTok and Instagram and all those things today, but that's not where it started. My journey started when I was 18 years old making YouTube videos just pulling up my phone and sharing different things that were on my mind, never talking about my faith because I didn't feel comfortable to talk about my faith and I didn't actually have a desire to. I just wanted to encourage people, right? I wanted to develop this gift. When God puts a gift on your heart, you have to not only discover it, but then start to develop it and go through the training season so God can properly prepare you for what he has next because there's always a next in your life based on your dedication, commitment, and discipline to, to, to building your relationship with him and also putting yourself out, out there through the actions you take every day. So I was just making videos every single week. And then I had an idea with my brother Ross who was into fitness and he had moved home and we worked together and I got him in the best shape of his life and I was like his trainer because I was a trainer at the time. I said, why don't we start a YouTube channel? So we started a fitness YouTube channel. I was still able to encourage through the lens of YouTube fitness. And we started making videos, going to 24-hour fitness at two o'clock in the morning to film some videos on the workouts we were doing to hopefully help others. That channel never had so many followers or, or subscribers, if you will, today in the YouTube world, but it was reaching people. It was reaching a, you know, a few hundred people a, vi a video, and I was like, this is so cool. I'm so passionate about fitness, and I get to share my fitness with others, and, it, and, it, and if it helps them, that's amazing. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought at that point in time in my life, I was going to be a trainer or a, a coach in the fitness industry for the rest of my life. But you know what? God always has something bigger planned for you. You just have to keep walking with him, building your relationship relationship and let him prepare you for what's next because there's a next before me being where I am today having doing online ministry full time right so we started the YouTube channel. That was great. It, we, it, it was fun. And, and it was, again, just developing that gift of encouragement through the lens of fitness and what I learned to potentially help others. I started a personal training business at the time on, si on the side of working a sports performance training job. And that was going well. I had a few clients. I started training some of the clients at the fitness performance center I worked at. And I was like, my life is good. I like what I'm doing. I'm building my relationship with God. I'm, I'm getting to do something that's creative on YouTube to share my passions through the YouTube channel that was just around my journey. It was called Dane's Great Journey at the time. And then I had this YouTube channel with my brother Ross called DRK Fitness. DRK Fitness eventually ended. We just decided to stop doing it. That's fine. Everything that you go through, you grow through and you learn and it develops those skills and gifts that God puts inside of you. Throughout that journey, I also had um, something significant happen to me in my life. And it was one of the most significant and difficult challenges and is a huge part of my testimony today that you might not know that I want to share with you next. So... From 18 to 22 years old, my life was growing so much. I was connecting to God. I was building my relationship with Jesus. I was, you know, going through the ups and downs of fighting through your flesh and, you know, trying to build and build better habits and behavior and growing in fitness, going to college. I, I, at this point now, when I was 20, I, was, I, was, I believe I was at ASU now. I could be wrong in the timeline of things, but I did have, after SCC in two years, I took two years off because I didn't know um, I wanted to just, I wanted to take two years off to work on fitness and work on just like 
building skills and, and practical things that could help my career farther along than necessarily going to school for two more years. I was going to go back to school. I just wanted to take a little bit of a hiatus and a break so I could focus on fitness and focus on the things that I was working on building um, for my life at that time, which was fitness. There was a significant thing that happened to me in my life that changed and really at that point in time ruined my life, if you will. I, 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 looking back on it now, it was the biggest blessing in my life, but at the time it ruined my life and I lost everything. What happened when I was 22 years old was God was imparting so much into me and I was learning and growing and I felt connected to him and his presence and it was great. But the only problem with this whole thing and everything that was going so well was that any time that God puts a gifting on your heart, the enemy also creates a counter opposition to destroy what God is blessing you with and what God is planning for your life. And I didn't know that at the time. And I wasn't biblically strong enough in my beliefs because I only had so much time to spend time with God and I was busy and going to school and working and I was so busy and growing and reading the Bible when I could, pray, go to church. There was a lot. It was a lot of pressure, but I was excited and I was young and I had energy and I could do it and God was blessing me and bringing new people into my life and developing me and it was great. So something happened that was really challenging for me to deal with and what that was at that time was what started to happen in my life was I started to open myself up. I started to stop protecting the authority that God had given me by opening myself up to, because I was growing and I was learning, so I opened the door for the enemy to come in. And when I say I opened myself up, I meant I was just like, yeah, like I wanna learn, I wanna grow, I wanna do this and do that. And I wasn't like studying other religions or anything like that. I was just open. And when you open yourself up and you don't protect yourself with the authority that you have been given, the enemy can come and destroy your life. And that's what happened to me. The enemy destroyed my life for a time. And I, it was a time that I never thought I would, that I would never recover from. And what that was, was I started, like my brain started to, I started to like start thinking a little weird. And like, I started to question things in the Bible and I started to like argue a lot and I had so much energy and I was sleeping like five hours a night trying to optimize my whole life. And I started to spiral a little out of control, started to spiral out of control. I started to be grandiose in my thinking. And I think you can tell where this leads. I had a manic episode and that manic episode had lasted about four weeks to six weeks, just getting exponentially worse. I'll save the conversation around all the events that took place because it's hard to explain to someone who doesn't have experience with someone who is manic or someone who is having or going through mania. It was a very dark time in my life. I felt the enemy around me. I felt evil people following me, grandiose thoughts and visions that were delusional. And it affected me. It affected the family members that were around me at that time. My mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my friends. My life started to spiral out of control. And it was really hard to understand because when you are manic, when you have mania going on, you can't see it. You don't understand it. You're erratic. You're irrational. You're argumentative. And it spiraled so out of control to the point where I will get to the end of this story of all the mania that was going on where I got in my sister's car at the time. I had gotten behind the wheel and I started to drive and I said, I'm going to Los Angeles. Why? I don't know. I said, I'm going to go to LA and do this and, you know, grandiose thinking and thoughts of all these things that are completely outside of what God is doing in your life. But that's what happens when you have mania and manic behavior going on. So I started driving to LA and as I was going up to the freeway to turn onto the 101 ramp, I was going like 85 miles an hour and I turned the car and I clipped the back of the Hyundai that I was driving in. And I'm so glad that I didn't flip the car over the, the turnpike onto the freeway when that happened because I was going 85 miles an hour. I, I jerked the car back to get it under control as I got back, as I got back under control and coming onto the ramp to then get on the freeway. And then something inside of me was like, whoa, it shook me. I was like, relax, like chill. So I got off on the road on the freeway. I just got off to the side where there's a little space. I remember for some reason I had taken my brother's Bible, my brother, Sean, how weird is that? I took a Bible with me too. 
got out of the car, grabbed his Bible, and I said, I'm just going to walk to LA. Walk to LA. It's a six and a half hour drive, you know? Again, delusional, grandiose, manic behavior. So I started walking on the freeway. Could have gotten hit by a car, right? And then after maybe a little bit of time walking, there was uh, police vehicles that came up behind me, the lights and everything, and they said, stop, get on the ground. Get on the ground. And I immediately just complied and I got on the ground. And uh, Lord willing, nothing else happened because you know in these situations when you're dealing with people who are erratic, bad things sometimes happen. I'm just happy that God was protecting me during this very dark season in my life where the enemy was just oppressing my life too because I was open at the time and I'll get to my thoughts around that as well. So they took me to the hospital. They took my blood at that time and they said he has nothing in his system. We don't know what's wrong with him. I didn't have any drugs or alcohol. I hadn't drank in probably six months or so. And... I went to the hospital and then I went through this whole process of eventually admitting myself to a mental hospital, not even knowing I was going to one. I thought I was still in this whole delusion. That's how bad and extreme it was. And I got admitted to a mental hospital and then soon found out I was there, but still delusional. They had to give me such a strong cocktail, the doctor said to my mom, because of how manic I was. And they eventually were able to sedate me down to being stable. And I spent two weeks in that hospital. And after I got at that hospital, I went and saw a psychiatrist who I was going to start seeing as to dealing with this going forward, where they did a brain map on my brain, showed me my brain and the imbalance of the theta waves and beta waves, and basically said, uh, you're going to have to be on this medication because you have bipolar disorder one. Bipolar disorder one is where you experience at least one Manic episode, bipolar disorder two, and I'm not an expert on this, is more bipolar two has to do a lot more with depression and having spurts of manic behavior, but not like a full-blown mania episode. Like this mania lasted weeks, weeks, and got worse over time. So they had to do something to bring me back. So, and I mean, the, the doctor even said it to my mom at the hospital. The psychiatrist said, I, I was afraid we were going to lose your son. And when I heard that, like years and years later, I was like, what do you mean by lose? Meaning I go so manic, I just have a psychiatric break and never come back from it. That was scary to hear. Good thing God is bigger and had a greater plan and was protecting me. And I honestly was very upset at God when this, when I was going through this, I was like, why are you, why are you doing this to me? I've literally lost everything. I had to drop out of school. I lost my job. I lost my personal training business. I literally lost everything. It was the most difficult time in my life. And When I got out of the hospital, went to the psychiatrist, they told me what the situation was, why I was manic, and they also said I was, I think, ADD as well too, and I had to be on three medications, and that was gonna be the rest of my life. The rest of my life taking these medications. It was really frustrating too in the first week or two taking the medications because these medications have extremely bad side effects. I gained 20 pounds probably in like three or four weeks, and now I was out of shape again and not feeling good, confident, thinking I'm, going to be like this for the rest of my life and just wrestling with God, wrestling with trying to understand why is this, why did this happen? This isn't going to be the rest of my life. It was so difficult, you know, it was so difficult. And I'm so grateful that I had a relationship with God at the point because although that was the diagnosis and that was what was evident and real in my life, I also knew that my identity did come in God and being a child of God and not a victim or a, a person who was labeled something who has to live with that label for the rest of their life. So I was wrestling with why it happened, but I didn't fully accept it like this was my life. And I think that's extremely important when it comes to mental health because it's still so misunderstood. It's still so such a stigma and hard to talk about. But I still had that belief that okay, this is me, but this, I don't think this is going to be me forever. I had that belief, and I think that's so important, and that served in the process of getting better. So I was 22, and I just said, let's start putting your life back together. You've done this once before when you were not even knowing what you wanted to do with your life. Let's do it again. Started rebuilding my relationship with God, prayer, getting a routine together, getting back in the gym, shed the weight, which was great, Um, was taking the medication. And then I believe after I had been on the medication for maybe a month, 
or a month and a half. The timelines aren't maybe exact. I had, went, I, I had gone back to church to the same pastor who started my relationship with Jesus, Pastor Scott. They had a message. I was sitting there with my mom trying to listen still, you know, kind of in this state of just like, gosh, this is tough, you know. And at the end, they, uh, they did an altar call and they said, hey, if, if someone needs prayer, come up and uh, we'll pray for you. And my mom said, I want you to go up there. Go up and have Pastor Scott and his wife pray for you because they were both standing at the altar alongside other members of the church who were um, there to pray for people. So I said, okay. Went up to the altar, went right up to them, and I said, hey guys, can you pray for me? And kind of just told them a little bit about what happened. I think they knew a little bit about what happened because we were kind of close with uh, them too. And they laid hands on both of my hands like this. They laid hands on me him and his wife and were praying for me and in the process of them praying with for me my hands started to shake uncontrollably and I don't know why and my body started to shake and I started to like scream a little bit in a weird pitch and I don't want to try to recite it for you now but it was like a it was a pitch that was like scary almost like conniving and evil I'm being 100% honest with you right now I remember it like it was yesterday just this evil kind of like pitch and weird noise that was like like it was just so unsettling while they were praying for me and in the process of them praying for me when that was happening they had looked at me in the eyes when they were praying for me because they were like, what is going on? I don't know if they've ever experienced a healing or a deliverance like this in person based on how they were reacting or they were just reacting because I was making weird noises. But during that time and them praying for me, I felt this thing lifted from me. My hands stopped shaking. I didn't have this weird jittery behavior in my voice or vocal tone or pitch. And they had prayed for me and they were probably a little freaked out. It seemed like they were a little freaked out. And then I went back down and sat and I was like, oh, thanks for praying for me. This is good. And the healing took place. And I say that like I was healed and delivered. And I do believe with my diagnosis of being bipolar, I think a lot of it, because I didn't have it in my family on either side, I think a lot of it was demonic oppression. And I say it was demonic oppression because I was open at the time to not defend myself from the enemy. And the enemy saw the gift of encouragement that got placed in my heart and how I was hungry to work on it and build my relationship with him, that he wanted to destroy it and just destroy me, destroy my being, destroy my beliefs, everything. That's what the enemy does. So I was healed. I even went up to our pastor after just to say, hey, and, um, and he kind of was like, oh, I got to do something for my daughter. Like, so, cause I don't know if he knew how to handle it either, but that doesn't matter. God worked through him. God worked through him. God works through people to help you, to heal you, to transform you. Even if someone doesn't feel like they can heal someone or anything, God is bigger and in control of this whole process, which is great. So the good news is after that event that took place, in the following three weeks, I got off all the medication. I was so dedicated to say, thank you, Lord, for healing me. My identity is in you. I am strong in the Lord. I would pray. I would claim my healing. My mom would pray for me. My cousins would pray for me. My family would lay hands on me and pray for me. And in three weeks, I was able to get off all the medication. Those three medications that they said I would have to be on for at least some kind of mix of those for the rest of my life, I got off of it in three weeks. And my life just started to improve from there and improve from there. And after that whole episode happened, all the things I was learning and growing, developing, when you have a manic episode, it's really hard on your brain. So I felt like all that was stolen from me. And that was a really hard thing to wrestle with because I was like, Lord, I was building my relationship with you and learning and developing for three years before this happened. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, longer than three years. And I felt like I'd been robbed from me. I felt like I was dumb, not dumb, but just like slow and just not as like articulate and smooth in my speech and vocabulary it was frustrating because I was like, all that time is gone. But slowly but surely, after being prayed for and getting off the medication, it all started coming back. I started having that hunger again and feeling that you know, sense of self that I felt when I was 22 and God was putting all these gifting and anointings on my life. I started to bring it all back. I started to you know, keep moving forward. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm 31 years old. That happened when I was 22. I have not taken a pill or had a manic episode or anything in relation to mental health challenges ever happen again in my life. Praise God for that. He is the miracle and he worked a miracle in my life of total and transformational healing over my body and my mind. And just going through that process, going through that journey, going through that most difficult season in my life has strengthened my faith so much today. And it's 
led me to do what I do today, which I'll get into in just a second. And I know this video is at 34 minutes and it's kind of long. And if you're still listening here, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And I hope this can, you know, share with just, you know, share with you some, some encouragement that God still loves you and he is concerned with you and everything that you go through, he is there and he's going to help you overcome because you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So as I started to reclaim my life, get my body back in shape, get back into school to finish college and all these other things that were going on that were well, I was recovering, I was getting stronger, my mind was getting sharper, I was getting more biblical into the word again, doing the behaviors and the disciplines that God needed me to do to keep moving my life forward. It was great. It was great. And then I stepped away from the fitness industry, got an opportunity to join, go into technology sales and join startups and that was for more years of my life before the pandemic happened. And it was great. I got to travel all over the United States working with Fortune 100 companies and 500 companies. It was so amazing and God blessed me. He blessed me in that career. He gave me, he gave me way more than what I had at the time before I'd lost everything. He doubled it. You know how it says God gives you double for your trouble? He more than doubled it into my relationships and my finances and my career and my relationship with him. That negative challenging event in my life that broke me at one point in my life was the seed for God to do something amazing with. And I know it's hard to see when you're going through it, but I saw it years after. As I started getting everything back, I started to look back at that event, not from a victim mindset, not from a look at what happened to me. Why did this happen to me, God? To thank you, God. And I think that's so powerful when we can thank him for the amazing things that happened to us in our lives. And that event, although it was I've, although I wish it on no one and people suffer with this every single day all around the world, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I say it because my relationship with Jesus and his power, understanding the power of the Holy Spirit working through you, creating miracles that happen every single day in people's lives, it happened to me. And it changed my relationship with God. And it started preparing me for something that God was going to bring into my life years down the road. I was in technology and all that stuff for four years, five years, six years maybe. But at this time now, I'm 27 years old and the pandemic happens, I think, when I'm 27 and I get, I, I get ready to turn 28 and I'm working from home in this technology job and God puts something on my heart. And what he puts on my heart is, hey, I want you to start sharing your faith. And when I heard that, I was like, Lord, what do you mean you want me to start sharing my faith? No, you don't. I'm not qualified to do that. I'm not a pastor. I'm not the most biblically sound person. Yes, I love you when I'm building my relationship with you, but I'm not ready to share my faith. God qualifies you, not anyone else, not the credentials. God appoints you and calls you to do different things. You just have to be able to answer it. I wrestled with it for weeks, meditated on the word, prayer, tried to figure out how, why, and I came to the conclusion. I said, well, everyone has a gift and a calling to do something. Everyone can make a difference with their relationship with God because we're here to serve you, Lord, and impact others with what you put in our hearts. And I said, well, Lord, if I was to share my faith, if I was to talk on social media because I was already comfortable, had done that for years, what could I talk about that I was comfortable and confident sharing? And you know what the answer was? Well, you know it if you're here and you've watched some of my videos. The answer was prayer. So I just started praying for people and I started on TikTok, not YouTube, not Facebook, not all the other platforms. I just started on TikTok because I'm like, no one knows me there. No one knows me there. So I'll just go, I'll have zero followers and I'll just start praying for people. And all I d decided to commit to when I started was just, I'm going to pray one prayer a day. That's it. I'm going to go on for five minutes, make a prayer, edit it, put it out there, go back to work because I was still working in technology sales from home during the pandemic. That was my start into the ministry that God placed on my heart. And if you're watching this video and you don't think you have a ministry, your ministry is you. Your ministry is where you are, what you do in your community, how you're building your relationship with God and sharing that with others with the gifting that he's put on your heart. You don't have to have a social media to do that. Isn't that great to know? But that's how he started my online ministry, my ability to just put out my faith on social. Because he was like, Dane, you've been making content your whole life. You never talk about your faith. I think it's time to start doing it. Let's go, right? And again, he didn't auditorially say that to me. This is how I was feeling. It was like God was calling me out and, and I was feeling that. And it was so powerful. So I decided to start sharing my faith, just praying once a day, that's it, right? You just gotta trust God, step through the door, step out of the boat, step through the door of opportunity. He can't do it for you. 
And I learned at that time in my life over the last five years to trust God. Trust God when he wanted me to leave my fitness career and go into the technology sector. And he blessed that abundantly. And then when he brought this, he said, trust me, let's go. I'll take care of it. You don't need to worry about anything. You don't need to worry about followers. You don't need to worry about what this is going to be. Just do it for me. And I was like, I can do that. That's what the YouTube videos were for before. They were for you because it was helping me build what you put inside of me because everything is a gift from you that I give, that I get, and I have to steward and manage it well. So I just started praying once a day. And in the first year, you know, it was great. I was really just on TikTok. I think I started an Instagram maybe in month nine. But in that first year on TikTok, you know, it was slow, maybe in the first seven months of just like reaching a couple thousand people. But a couple thousand people to me were like, wow, there's a thousand people who enjoy prayers. And I decided to pray during a time where a lot of us needed prayer because we were locked down and the pandemic was happening. So anytime I got a message from someone or a comment that said, hey, I really needed that. Hey, that really helped me. I'm like, Lord, this is cool. People could use these prayers and I feel confident in praying. I'm a prayer warrior. That's how I felt because I was praying over my life ever since I was 18 and started following Jesus. So I was like, I can do this, Lord. And then God started to put more on me and put more on me and make more videos and do this and do that. And then the journey really started where I was like, why don't I make more videos? Why don't I pray about this? Or why don't I pray about that? Or why don't I make a prayer in the morning and a prayer in the evening? And why don't I make videos around Bible verses and this? Why don't I jump on Instagram? Why don't I jump on Facebook? Why don't I jump on YouTube? Why don't I start writing a daily devotional? Why don't I start texting people prayers on a text community list to get the gospel out in every possible way that we can? Why don't I start a podcast sharing Bible stories with the help of my mom the biggest Christian mentor in my life, God just started to flood it on me. And it was hard, right? It was hard to deal with. And that's why I had to keep him close. I went through ups and downs of learning how to be a content creator and starting to build a following. And that was great lessons that I'll share with you in the, another future video because I know we're already at 41 minutes. But isn't it interesting that the gifting on my life that God put on my life when I was 18, the detrimental challenging times of the enemy trying to destroy that all that was good, God was with me through it, helped heal me to be a part of my testimony to share with others and what I do today. And there was a time, a year, a year and four months ago, where I made a decision to step away from the amazing career that God had blessed me with, working for an amazing technology, having a great job with benefits and good pay and all the benefits of an amazing job, I would say at that point in time in my life. I, I, I I made a decision to step away from it and say, Lord, I'm going to put you first in this thing that you've been calling me to do. And I'm going to try to figure out how to do this full time. In this last year, as this video is being filmed in November, this year has been one of the hardest years for me to trust God. Because if you didn't know, being a social media content creator, however you want to call it, Christian content creator, I look at it as like I have an online ministry because I'm sharing God's word and sharing you know, the things that he is helping me with. Um, it's been the really hard year trying to figure that out. But it's been the best year spiritually for me. And that's the most important thing. If you're built up spiritually, you can handle anything outside of you. And God has brought so many amazing Christians into my life to support me, to cover me with prayers, to give me guidance through this process of saying, like, I do this full time now, right? Which is amazing. And, and I share this video with you not to, like, tell you to do what I'm doing, but I just want to share to help you get a better understanding of me and where I came from because people look at me today and they're like, wow, Dane, you have followers. You have 400,000 followers on TikTok. You have 140,000 followers on Instagram. You know, you, you, you have all these people who care about you and you're, 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 you're this and this and this. And it's like, this is all God's goodness for me just trusting him by making a simple video once a day for five minutes. Anyone can do that. But can you trust him and do it from the intent that you want to build your relationship with God and you want to honor him in everything you do. Even if your, your call is not to share your faith on social media, it could be your call to share your, your unique passion on social media and let God bless that as you put him first and keep him at the center of your life. It's changed everything for me. I've never been more fulfilled and joyful in my life, even though there's still so much more to figure out in this world of trying to figure out how to be a content creator full time, right? And figure out how to earn a living and do this. And, you know, YouTube is one of those places. Facebook is one of those places. Instagram is one of those places to try to figure out how to do that. And I'm just taking it one day at a time, but I'm making sure I spend time with him every single day, putting him first, reading the word, praying, praise and worship, attending a church, surrounding myself with believers who can support me as I support them and pour my gifts into them. They can pour their gifts into me to build up my spirit and protect me. So, I'll stop there, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped give you a little bit more of a glimpse into my story and how I got here. And um, I hope it can encourage you. 
for whatever it is that you're doing and whatever season you're in in your life. I just hope this can encourage you to trust God. He takes us all through training seasons. The enemy tries to stop us in what we're going through, but if you keep putting him first, if you keep building your, your firm foundation by getting into the word, he is gonna do amazing things for you in your life. I know it, I'm a product of it. I'm a product of God healing my life at the most critical time in my life where I felt like I didn't know what to do or felt like God had abandoned me, he was right there. He just said, hey, hold on, I know this is hard, but I got you, I got you, I got you. This is a setback, but it's a setup for me to go deep with you and help you develop. And I know it's hard to see that when you're going through the thick of it, I get it, I was there. I was there in the dumps, lost everything, broken. God rebuilt me up. God rebuilt everything. God blessed me in everything I'd done up until that point. And he's strengthened my faith and character to the point where every single day I want to share my faith with others and just encourage people through that gifting that God placed on my heart to be an encourager for others, to share faith, hope, and encouragement in every video I make on social media now. Before it was just sharing my life and sharing what I was learning. Now it's all centered around putting him first and sharing faith, hope, and encouragement for others. So if you're here and you're a subscriber watching this video, I appreciate you. I hope this helped you get to know me a little bit better. You can always reach out to me. You can send me an email at dane at livewiththeprayer.com. You can comment below on this video and I'll read all the comments and um, try to interact with you as best as I can. I know my life is so busy now with all these comments and all these things and trying to adapt to social media, but I appreciate you nonetheless. And um, hopefully you, we can form some type of relationship because I try to connect and build a community within the community of social media. And uh, I just want to support you and pray for you and encourage you every single day. That's what God has put on my heart. And I'm going to keep chasing that. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep following Jesus. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because I think it's what God wants me to do in my life at this point in time. He's sure blessed it and given me great opportunities and I'm just going to keep trusting him and I hope I can help support you in your journey. I'm not the answer to whatever you're going through. God is the answer, but maybe he can work through me in a video, in a conversation, in a live stream, whatever it might be. So I thank you for being here. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see my journey or you just want to join me in prayer every day because we pray every day here. We pray every day. I've prayed every single day on social media in, over the last two and a half years. Two and a half years is when I started, and I prayed every single day since. Isn't that amazing to see what God does in your life? And he will transform your life as you submit to him and keep putting him first in everything you do. All right, that's it, guys. I promise. I know we're at 46 minutes. God bless you. Thank you for watching this. And I look forward to making longer form videos like this in the future to help share some of the things I've learned. I don't have all the answers, but God has showed me some things that have really helped me. And I hope any video I make can help you with that lens of faith, hope, and encouragement. All right, friends, take care. God bless you. And I'll see you in a future video to come.